How's it going, YouTube? My name is Elbin Ninja 7 your resident Mistweaver monk, and we are back with a third Mistweaver raid guide of the tier. Yes, three. I know it seems like a lot, but that should show you how many changes we've received and just how powerful and versatile we are. But this build has been taking over Mistweaver recently, and for good reason. I mean, ever since I picked it up, my logs have done this. The potential of this build is through the roof like my logs are going up because i have swapped to this build and guys i guarantee you that this build is a lot easier than the other two so the other two builds that we've talked about already are the chi build it's a very good beginner's build also a very good heroic and normal rating build and then the yulon ramp which is kind of what we've we transferred into 10.2 with from last year it's it's a very powerful build but it does just get outscaled by this build now due to some changes. So what is this build? Well, it, it's it's very similar to the old Yulon ramp build because we do still ramp with Yulon, but the main difference is that we are not playing upwelling like we were with the other Yulon build. And we are also not playing Rising Mist. You guys remember this was the, the main talent, the big power point of the last build. Instead, we're taking Tear of Mourning, my favorite, one of my favorite talents on the entire Mistweaver Monk tree. And the throughput potential of this talent is wild. So let's go ahead and break down a couple reasons why we have swapped to this build and why it has just outscaled the other builds. So first off, if you've watched my Yulon Ramp build, you remember me talking a bit about the, the Renewing Mist soft cap. So they've put like a, a square root scaling is what I've heard it be called. But uh, basically every Renewing Mist that you have beyond five just gets weaker and weaker. So you're still going up in healing if you go up in Renewing Mist count, but you're gaining less and less for each Renewing Mist that you have out with your Vivify Cleaves. So the importance of, you know, maximizing your Renewing Mist count becomes less and less because they just become weaker and just provide less healing to each individual target than if you have a slightly less Renewing Mist count. So already, the, the ground that we stood on with the Yulon build became a little shaky. Also, we, although we're a lot tankier and we can survive a lot more mechanics, it's a lot more forgiving to stand in melee and just soak swirlies if, uh, by accident. Uh, since we now have Expel Harm, we now have Bounce Back, and we're just generally a lot more tanky. A big strong point of this build is that you can literally stand out in ranged. Yes, you still will be marked as a melee person by the game if there's ever a mechanic that chooses a melee to just drop a nuke on it would still choose you uh, however you could stand out in range because you are going to be casting basically a hundred percent of the time you could stand in melee uh, if you wanted to use rapid diffusion with your rising sun kick if you wanted to but that is like you know having absolute downtime but the best part about this build is that you can stand out in range cast freely and that it's very easy so let's go ahead and break it down so we're still running manatee although it get, did get nerfed i am i have chosen to run life cycles because i've noticed that with this build you get a lot more stacks and uh managing your mana bar is very important with this build it's probably the only hard part about this build i guarantee you but in this in this video today i'm going to show you guys a couple tricks that we can use to really optimize that we are also uh going back to playing summon jade serpent statue and unison this little you know one two punch combo provides a lot of free throughput that's very easy to get and then we're back to playing Focus Thunder. We can really use this now since uh, it, it lost a little bit of value because of the, the opportunity cost because Essence Font was very strong. But now Essence Font, I mean, you could still take Upwelling and play just fine if you really, really like Essence Font. But we are taking Focus Thunder because it really works well with this new ramp and how all of our cleaving is going to be done with our enveloping mists. And then, since we're still on a ramping build, Shaylin's Gift and Shao's Lesson is still just a great two point or two talent choice. It provides a lot of power to our ramps, which are just super strong with this build. And then finally, the thing that brings it all together tier of mourning so when you cast vivify or an enveloping mist on a target that already has your renewing mist you have a 10 percent chance to spread it now it's not that high of a chance so this isn't you know necessarily what we're going to be playing around on purpose however if you know what our tier set does all of our renewing mists apply a uh, a buff called chi harmony that we are going to be pumping like funneling heals into because they have one they take increased healing by 50 yes 50 percent 
but two, that healing is stored and then dispersed. A portion of it is dispersed after that Chi Harmony buff ends into all of the Renewing Mist targets. So that works perfectly with Tier of Mourning because we're gonna accidentally cast a lot of Vivifies, a lot of Enveloping Mists, into those targets because usually renewing mists it uh they are on a target that has chi harmony which we're already pumping into and then this talent does boost the vivify cleaving through your renewing mist so your invigorating mist basically is buffed by 20 percent and and this is the important part your enveloping mists will also funnel 20 percent of every hot tick into people with renewing mist so if you have 20 renewing mist out say your whole entire raid is coated with renewing mist and then your whole entire raid is coated with enveloping mist you can imagine how much healing is going to be spread around to every single person that has a renewing mist on it so all in all a very insane talent and dropping rising mist although uh yes this does extend all of our hots now we don't have any way to extend our hots but we're going to be casting a lot more of them and getting a lot more value from them so it becomes a lot easier makes your ramp windows kind of foolproof like if i can do it you can do it i promise you guys and you can kind of adapt to the situation the incoming damage that's happening with your ramp so let's get into the play style so first off i'm gonna be standing away from the dummies right now like pretend that let's say this guy is the boss and these are my friends just to show you guys how we would perform out away from the boss now other than managing your mana managing your manatee the hardest part of this build is the pre-pool if i'm being honest so you have a lot of things to upkeep number one before every single pool and even after like say your hunter resets a boss you're going to want to set down your summon jade serpent statue this is just a very good thing to just get used to and make sure that you have a weak or that glows or something flashy that shows you when it's active because this is a lot of passive throughput not just coming from the statue itself but it also channels with unison you see here it's also connecting to a second target so you're getting a lot of passive throughput just by setting this down before a pool and then by having this out you're gonna want to just tap it uh, I just tapped Soothing Mist just because it's going to be channeling or, or stacking up your Common Coalescence. Yes, this did get nerfed, but it's still a pretty solid talent. Still makes your first shield very, it makes a, a DPS very safe. So just have that be stacking up, you know, while you're eating your food or before each pool. And then the third thing, I promise you this is it, but it is the most important, probably up there with the statue. And that is to come into a pool with a full manatee or as close to a full manatee as you can so while everyone's eating or right once you get that mass revive after a wipe make sure and be healing everyone up by just casting hard casted vivifies don't channel soothing mist into them because um as you notice we are taking clouded focus once again so it will reduce the mana cost so you want to be as mana inefficient before the pool as possible so that you can stack up your manatee very quickly and what i like to do is to cast an enveloping mist cast a vivify cast an enveloping mist cast a vivify and what is that doing it's giving us a chance to get more stacks because we are taking life cycles and then as you see here once we reach about 20 stacks as close to as 20 as you can get uh, then you can eat your food and get your mana back but the purpose is is that you're going to come into the fight with a very with a couple seconds of that mana reduction and that first mana reduction is very important because you guys know a lot of times we ulon ramp close to on pool like within the first 15 seconds on a lot of fights so you can really save a lot of mana yes your ulon ramps are very mana efficient because ulon does cut the cost of enveloping mist in half however cutting that mana cost even further and then also cutting the mana cost of your ulon itself will save you a ton of mana plus like all the pre-pool stuff you guys know that those first couple seconds of a pool you're just spamming into the tank or doing some non-important things other than ramping so it's very important to keep that stacked now also note if you have a long window between pools i know we're spending a lot of time on this but if you have a long window where you start to run out of your manatee stacks just cast enough spells to generate one stack and it'll refresh that two minute duration that's that's everything you need to do before the timer starts but as you know your, your group does like a countdown timer on each boss and then uh you pull so say that we're on a 10 second timer say that they start a 10 second timer before you start the pool what you do right at 10 seconds is you cast a renewing mist 
which will apply to Harmony, but we won't get much value from it itself, but we'll get a lot of value from that Renewing Mist. Renewing Mist lasts 20 seconds, and uh, then we'll have a free Renewing Mist coming in for the first 10 seconds. But then once the timer is at seven seconds, eight or seven seconds, you're gonna start channeling that Mana T. You have to do this before the boss is pooled, because if the boss is pooled while you're sitting at a bunch of stacks, it'll reset that duration, it'll restart that, and you will come into the fight with zero stacks. So at seven seconds left on the timer, you're gonna start channeling your Mana T, and then that timer's gonna be counting down. You know, everyone's gonna be do, uh, doing nothing except for, you know, your one mage who's gonna pre-pool. And then it should end right up around the time that the boss is pooled. And then from there, you can go ahead and start your rotation, having 20 seconds of a free mana T buff, free 30% mana reduction on all your spells for the first chunk of the fight. Another extremely important thing that I forgot to mention is that as a monk, you do apply Mystic Touch to the boss. So every time you damage them, you're gonna apply a debuff that makes them take 5% more physical damage. Since we are not gonna be in melee range a lot of the time to hit the boss, we're not gonna be casting Rising Sun Kicks uh, if you choose not to you're gonna need to still apply that debuff. And how do you do that best? Well, one is, funnily enough, Crackling Jade Lightning. You can just tag the boss at the start of a pool. You wanna do this within the first second of pulling a boss. It should be your first global cooldown in the fight to apply that for the entire duration of the fight. Or a more efficient way is Chi Burst. Chi Burst is a talent that costs no mana, it'll heal people it passes through, and as long as you're in range, you're not as far away as possible, you'll be able to shoot this through a couple allies and still tag the boss for at least like one damage. And that'll apply that debuff to them, uh, and you should be good to go. You see their Mystic Touch. All right, so that is all the pre pool stuff. I promise, I know it took a long time, but let's go and get into the actual rotation of this build. And like I've said a couple times already in this video, it's it's very simple, it's very easy. So we're gonna break this into two sections. Once again, just like our other builds, we have our Celestial window and we have everything outside of that. So once every minute, we're gonna have Yulon available. Now I say available, I'm not saying that we're gonna cast it once every minute because you should, by now, you should know um, the fight timers and know when all the incoming damage is happening. And you shouldn't necessarily always press Yulon right once it comes off cooldown because this is your most powerful throughput moment you want to compare this or you want to put this up against a lot of incoming damage so if everyone's at full everyone's sitting around full just save your Yulon uh, for a few seconds and then start your ramp once you know that incoming damage is about to happen but the timing works out roughly the same as the Yulon ramp build you're gonna want to start your ramp about like seven or eight seconds before the incoming damage because you'll peak in your ramp before then if not six or seven seconds since your ramp is a little shorter now due to not taking rising mists so the ramp uh, works very similarly to the normal traditional Yulon ramp playstyle, except it's more adaptable. We don't have to stop the ramp to cast a rising sun kick in the middle of it, and, and that kind of you know adds a lot of complications to the ramp. We can just cast our spells, do our ramp the normal way. And the good part about this is now that we're taking Tier of Mourning, our enveloping mess cleave, so we can decide in the moment, depending on how the damage, the incoming damage is looking, do we wanna stop our ramp and do the, the best thing possible, which is spamming Vivifies into a single target just like normal, or do we, we just wanna keep casting a couple of enveloping mists? If, is everyone fully topped up? Should I spam some big chunky Vivifies or should I just cast like a couple more enveloping mists? Uh, so let's go and look at what that looks like. So the ramp starts the same way as the other build. So you're gonna wanna come in with as many buffs as possible. Remember that we now will have two Thunder Focus T boosted spells, but you're gonna wanna give yourself a buff. Now there are a couple different ways that you can use Thunder Focus T with this build, but the easiest way is just still to give yourself a haste buff coming into your ramp. So you're gonna start your ramp, like I said, a couple seconds before, like seven, six, or eight seconds before uh, the damage starts happening with a Shailun's Gift. This is gonna give yourself a Shao's Lesson buff and then uh, boost the entire ramp. So Shailun's Gift, and then immediately after that Shailun's Gift, we are gonna use our Thunder Focus T to further boost ourselves. So you could either just do two Renewing Mists, so like uh, Thunder Focus T, Renewing Mist to give yourself the Haste buff, and then another Renewing Mist, or you could do something different. You could Renewing Mist, summon Yulon, and then uh, go ahead and Enveloping Mist that same target. 
So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna double Renewing Mist, but know that you could Renewing Mist and then Enveloping Mist to target with Yulon out. So Renewing Mist, summon Yulon, and then Enveloping Mist that same target since they have a Chi Harmony buff on them. But like I said, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna treat it as if we have both of our Renewing Mist stacks available. We're just gonna uh, Thunder Focus T uh, Renewing Mist, do a second Renewing Mist, and then summon Yulon start a ramp that way. So let's go ahead and do it. So. Uh, Pretend like I still have Shao's lesson uh, rolling and I just casted that. Thunder Focus T, we're gonna Renewing Mist one target, Renewing Mist another target. We're gonna summon Yulon and then with Yulon out, we're gonna cast Enveloping Mist on the targets that have Chi Harmony on them. So if you picture like my party frames here, you're gonna see after your first Enveloping Mist cast, Rapid Diffusion is gonna apply a Renewing Mist on a certain target, just a random target nearby them. And then that will be your next target that you Renewing Mist or you Enveloping Mist. So what you're doing is you're kind of chasing the RNG. So whoever that Chi Harmony that Renewing Mist gets applied to is gonna be your next target to Enveloping Mist. And that way you're really optimizing your Chi Harmony buff. Here is a quick example of what I mean by chasing hots. So you see there, I Shaloon's Gifted, I Thunder Focus T, and Renewing Mist, and then Enveloping Mist. You're gonna see here, as I'm casting these Enveloping Mists, you can follow my mouse, and I'm kind of drawing a line between all of the Chi Harmony buffs. So I'll go back 10 seconds, play it again. So once again, we're gonna Shaloon's Gift to give ourselves the Shao's Lesson buff, and then you're gonna see me Thunder Focus T to use this last Renewing Mist charge. And then uh, I'm gonna summon Yulon and then do a quick Enveloping Mist. And then you're gonna follow my mouse to these Chi Harmony buffs uh, so that we know who to apply the next Renewing Mist to. Um, and then that's gonna maximize your ramp by chasing what I mean by chasing that RNG buff. Now, how many Renewing Mists are you gonna be casting while Yulon is out? Well, that's what I was saying earlier is it's kind of variable. You can kind of adapt to the situation, which is what makes this build one, very easy because you really can't go wrong or two, very adaptable, very versatile and very powerful. So you can still do the same exact thing as your other ramp, your other Yulon ramp that you're used to cast four or five enveloping mists and then pick a target and channel soothing mist into. And that will give you the maximum like blasting HPS because you're going to have a couple enveloping mists out they're going to be cleaving off of all those free renewing mists but you're also going to be slamming that vivify cleave healing into everyone or like i said earlier in the video if if everyone's already topped up by the time you've cast a couple of enveloping mists and you missed your chance to vivify cleave then it's not the worst thing in the world to just keep casting enveloping mists and that's why i say this is very easy because you can literally spend your entire ramp window just casting like seven or eight enveloping mist and it'll still do good throughput because look at all this hot ticking, all this cleave healing, it just kind of goes insane. Or like I said, we can double renewing mist and then summon Yulon and it's very weird using the dummies but then chase the uh, Chi Harmony procs and then do a couple of enveloping mist and then pick a target that has a Chi Harmony on them and then spam a bunch of Vivifies into them, you'll get a lot more Chi Harmony value. I can't tell you guys enough that picking your Chi Harmony targets to heal just provides so much more healing. So make sure that you, at the end of your ramp, when you pick a target to Soothing Mist, you pick a target that has Chi Harmony. Like your newest Chi Harmony, and you pick them, Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist, and then spam Vivifies into that certain target because it'll just blast healing into them and onto everyone else. So that's the ramp. Like I said, it's very adaptable to the situation, but mainly you just cast a couple enveloping mists while Yulon is out, applying enveloping breath to most of, if not your entire raid. And then all those free renewing mists are gonna allow all that cleaving to happen. And then you can further blast some cleaving with your vivifies. It, it works a lot like the old Yulon ramp, except now we don't squeeze in a rising sun kick. So it should be pretty easy to pick up the ramp window. But what do we do outside of the ramp window? Is it a lot harder? Is this the hard part of the build? Guys, no, I promise you, this is also a very easy part of the build. Now I will say outside of your ramp is a, a great time to manage your mana T. You never wanna sit at 20 stacks. At least during downtime, you wanna drink at least like five or six stacks, get that off of 20 
so that you are not wasting those mana T stacks because your mana will be likely the hardest part to manage this build. But outside of your Yulon ramp window, uh, there are a couple things that you wanna pay attention to. So one is that you will be splitting your one minute Yulon ramps in half by the 30 second timer of Thunder Focus T. So how do you use that Thunder Focus T between your Yulon ramps? Well, one, the number one rule is to use it on cooldown because you want it to line up perfectly with that Yulon ramp window. But you do the same exact thing, except now there's a little bit more um, like versatility with this Thunder Focus T outside of your Yulon ramp. So you could do the same thing. You could apply two Renewing Mists or you could apply a Renewing Mist and then into that same target, apply an Instant Enveloping Mist with the second stack of Thunder Focus T. Or you could just pick two targets to cast Enveloping Mist onto because they will be instant and just provide a lot of healing, which once again provides a lot more versatility. You can choose in the moment what would be best for you. But the important part is, is that we're just using that. We're using that on the 30 second timer. But other than your Thunder Focus T, you literally have a very, very easy rotation. The number one rule, the number one rule is that you don't sit at 20 stacks of manatee, but you don't sit at two stacks of renewing mist. Once again, you're used to this by now. You just make sure that at least one of these stacks is always recharging. That'll really optimize your renewing mist. You don't want to sit at two stacks because then you're losing a lot of potential. You also are just not applying as many chi harmonies as you possibly can. So once we've gotten that out of the way, all you're going to do is you're going to one, either pick a target that needs instant healing. Say someone accidentally stood in a swirly, took like 70% of your health. Then it's fine to just pump a couple vivifies into them with a soothing mist. But for the most part, if everyone's like sitting at similar HPs or there's just like constant rot damage, then what all you're going to do is pick a target with Chi Harmony. Yes, I know I've said that 10,000 times, but I have to nail it into your heads in this video. Pick a target with Chi Harmony and then just soothing mist them enveloping mist and then spam vivifies and you're just going to rinse and repeat say that i've healed myself to full and i've i've finished a full soothing mist channel then you're going to renew mist another target soothing mist enveloping mist and then spam vivifies until that chi harmony runs out and then you're going to pick another target and then do the same exact thing and the timing really works out with uh your renewing mist recharge and the chi harmony buff because you see their chi harmony fell off and we're already back at full stacks of renewing mist but this is literally the entire rotation outside of your ramp window. The only difference is, is right now I'm just blasting through my mana bar. You wanna try to have as much uptime on this mana T buff as possible. Whether that means drinking all 20 stacks during a complete moment of downtime or drinking five stacks at a time and then doing a full channel of Soothing Mist, it's up to you or up to the moment, I guess, in the fight. But really, truly, this build is super simple. Like I said, just practice your Yulon ramps, which now they're a lot easier, and then practice your downtime. Practice uh, getting out of the habit of pressing Essence Font unless you're taking Upwelling, but just once again, watch your mana bar. And then two, practice targeting your Chi Harmony buffs. You're just missing out on a lot of healing if you don't do that. So downtime, we're picking a target with Chi Harmony, we're, we're casting Soothing Mist into them, Enveloping Mist, and then spamming Vivifies, and look at how much healing we are doing there. For our Yulon Ramps, for another recap, we're gonna Shaylin's Gift to get Shao's Lesson buff, we're gonna Thunder Focus T, double Renewing Mist, and then we're gonna summon Yulon, and then target those Chi Harmony buffs. Whoever gets the, the last Chi Harmony buff, we're gonna target, and then after a couple enveloping mists, about four or five, or even more if you need to, pick a target, channel Soothing Mist into them, cast an enveloping mist, and then spam Vivifies. You guys are used to this part of the Yulon ramp, so it's not much different, so I'm not gonna waste any more of your time with this video. But hopefully I showed you guys just how easy this build can be and just how much blasting you can do on the HPS meters. Now the last thing, I, I normally do this first, but the last thing I wanna talk about is stat weights. So the stat weights, the good thing is, is they're very similar to um, your other builds. Both of your other builds, you wanna optimize haste or maximize haste, maximize crit, and then look at verse. However, there is a slight shift you don't necessarily need as much haste with this build. Since your Yulon ramp windows aren't super tight, you don't need to squeeze in a rising sun kick into that ramp. You don't necessarily need those extra points of haste. Instead of pushing up to 30 or trying as hard as you can and, and making that your first priority, 
you can bring that down to about 20, 25% and be just as fine. However, 30% is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. However, the best stat in this build I would say is crit. One, it just pushes a ton of healing, but two, it works really well with manatee. Those manatee uh, stacks critting is very, very good and will be very important. So push that as close to 30% as you can as your number one priority outside of intellect, obviously. And then after that, you can work on your haste, getting that around 25% is a safe number, and then versatility up to about 20% is a good number. But once again, another way that uh, haste kind of loses a bit of value in this build compared to other builds is by rising sun kick. You guys know that rising sun kicks cooldown actually gets decreased by the amount of like haste that you have. So having l more haste is normally very good because we can reduce that cooldown a little bit and make it more optimal in those builds. But since we're not pressing this button, uh, or, or if you choose not to press this button for that extra rapid diffusion chance or proc, then yeah, haste just loses a little bit of value with this build. And then verse just scales up all of our healing just the same so crit especially and then verse and haste are also great stats and then once again mastery just loses out so there you have it that is the tier of morning yulon ramp build guys my name is lb ninja 7 thank you so much for watching this video now you have everything that you need to know in order to get out and start topping those hps meters in raid as always if you have any further questions feel free to leave those down in the comment section below because you guys know we have the best most helpful community on this channel and i myself am always down there in the comments responding to those also we have a discord community so get that link down in the description below and join up today so you can ask any questions we're always posting like our vaults asking questions there so make sure and join the discord and then also a huge shout out to the patreons without these guys this channel Channel would not be possible i promise you guys i would be flipping burgers so thank you so much to the patreons you guys make this channel possible and i am forever grateful and if you want to see your name alongside these guys on screen make sure and check out the link down in the description below where there are a lot of different tiers for you to support and they help out the channel all the same so thank you once again for watching this video instead of all the other videos and that has been the mistweaver tier of morning raid build i'll see you guys in the next video until then Take care.